Christian Pilsen. Hi, it's the Slick Machine. And if you've ever wanted to read a 500 plus page novel written in the early 1900s about the last great hero of humanity as he wanders through the perpetual night of the far future killing monsters with a giant semi-sentient pizza cutter on a quest to save the reincarnation of his ancient and lost love, then you're watching the right video. Uh, I just read this novel. It's called The Nightland. It makes me very upset that it took me this long to know about it and consume it because I love it. If you were to ask me what my favorite novel is, it would be this one right now in this moment. H.P. Lovecraft called it unforgettable, and he also called it verbose. And H.P. Lovecraft calling you verbose is kind of like a porn star calling you a slut. I just wanted to kind of talk about it because I, I just, I feel like this guy didn't get the credit that he deserved. And then he got fucking killed in World War I, and it's really sad. Um, but anyway, I wanted to tell you about this shit because it's crazy. It's n fucking nuts. Um, basically, here's the setup. The sun is dead. The last millions of humanity are uh, homed in this giant pyramid that they can't leave because there's these fucking incomprehensible, horrific, giant monsters that are just waiting for the, the earth current, the last of their power source to die out so that they can attack the pyramid and fucking kill everybody I would assume but they're being kept back by this magic ring of light and I, anyway it's fucking lit okay I don't need to I shouldn't even have to explain it I should just be like read this fucking book it should be a three second video but anyway since I'm such a nice guy I'll keep talking about it uh it's fucking really cool okay just to give you some sense of the terror, um, the main character keeps a fucking suicide capsule in his arm just in case he gets assailed by one of these, you know, nameless horrors because uh, you're not only at the risk of death but of complete spiritual obliteration, and I think that's cool as fuck. Um, he's also got this weapon that's a fucking blade saw on a pole called the Discus, and it's, he's constantly fucking smiting horrific monsters with it, and it's dope as shit. Um, one thing I have to say that I uh, don't like about it is the first chapter. I really think uh, it works better without it. It's kind of, I mean, the if you were to omit the first chapter, you get all the information throughout the book anyway, but... Uh, there's more of a mystique to it because it's not spelled out uh, for you in the very beginning. And I kind of, I kind of wonder uh, what Big Willie was thinking when he wrote the first chapter because it just seems kind of just very generic. And if I had picked the book up and just started reading the first pages without knowing anything about it, I probably would have just set it back down and forgot about it. But um, it's just this generic and unnecessary framing device uh, that is I, I think this is kind of a cool touch that it's never returned to anyway if you decide to read it I think you can easily skip the first chapter or read the first chapter when you're done reading the rest of the book or you can just read it as intended um, it do, the first chapter doesn't ruin the book it just has that Tom Bombadil stink of not being necessary anyway um, I think it's fucking great. Um, I'm going to include a link to, um, a place where you can read it for free because it's public domain, and then I'm going to include a, a link to the audiobook just in case you have 18 hours to kill, and I know you do. Um, and then I'm going to include the, um, an Amazon link to the hardcover that I fucking bought and like, and it's not an affiliate, just in case you were thinking I was trying to fucking make a dollar, um, but anyway, uh, it kind of makes me sad, because I, it, it's, this book had just didn't get the attention it deserves, and, uh, it's got, I think, like, three and a half stars on Amazon, because people are too fucking stupid to, uh, to understand the way it's written, I mean, it's, it was written in a, in a in an archaic way, 
1912, which is, I guess, why our, our boy Howard Phillips was calling it verbose. But I think it's quite lovely. I Once you get used to it, I, I enjoy it. Um, I'll read you a little excerpt when I come to the end of the video. It's probably my favorite paragraph in the book. Um, some other cool stuff. Uh, the main character is telepathic, and they ha and they um, they have to send this thing out called the master word, and it's never explained what the master word is, except that uh, without it, the fucking monsters in the Nightland will try to like uh, they'll use they'll try to trick you with telepathy and like impersonate people. So it's the thing that I like about that is that it it you know hints at the level of intelligence that these things have that they're like they'll fuck with you and they're they're gonna try to to get in your mind and shit anyway it's cool shit all right the fucking protagonist and probably by extension the author is uh, a dom with a foot fetish which i can't relate to at all because i don't have a foot fetish <laughs> um it's good shit all right the fucking guy is dead. He died in World War One. I. I think I said that, and it's, it just kind of makes me sad because he. It's a great book, and I, it makes me. It hurts me that I. It took so long for me to hear about it. But anyway, I'll read you. What's probably my favorite paragraph? Okay, I'll give you a little bit of context for the paragraph that I'm about to read. Uh, the main character has made contact with the reincarnation of his lover, and then. Uh, they lose contact, and he he's pretty sure that she's in some real deep shit. And uh, he takes a vow that he's going to go and save her. And often she's referred to simply as the maid, but her name is Nani. And so uh, I'll go ahead and read it to you. And at the last I grew maddened with the sorrow of this thing and the sense and knowledge of harm about the maid. And I stood upright upon my feet, and I raised my hands, and I gave word and honor unto Nani through all the blackness of the night that I would no more abide within the mighty pyramid to my safety, while she that had been mine own through eternity came to horror and destruction by the beasts and evil powers of that dark world. And I gave the word with my brain elements and bade her to be of heart, for that until I died I would seek her. But out of the darkness there came not but the silence. <laughs> 